Well, uh, UBTEB has been in existence for a period of about uh, 10 years and has a remarkable record of successful conduct of quality and credible national examinations and awards and have been cre created in response to addressing the need for standardizing the awards in what we call the BTVET uh, subsector and other specialized professions to produce competent and skilled graduates who are globally competitive. Now, the board continues to build, strengthen and consolidate its quality assurance systems to realize the production of innovative and creative graduates that meet the changing demands of the world of work in the region and around the globe and to contribute towards the national development. With main studios to discuss this and more, I have a CPA on Nesmas Oyesiga, the secretary, the executive secretary of the UBTEP this uh, afternoon. And you can actually join this conversation on Twitter. It's a very good one. And uh, Onesmas looks a little about what we call competence-based assessment for competitive labor force and economic development. Now the hashtag is UBTEB at 10. Those on Twitter join this conversation. I'm Andrew Chiamagir and this conversation is entirely looking at UBTEB. Um, Mr. Nesmus, good to see you. Good to see you and, and thanks uh, for hosting me. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's to you. <laughs> now tell us about UBTEB. We're celebrating 10 years, correct? Uh, Thank you and uh, good evening to our viewers. Mm. Uh, tomorrow mm. we are set okay. to celebrate, to mark the climax of the 10 years celebrations. Wow. We started these celebrations uh, November last year, mm -hmm. so tomorrow is the climax. And uh, it will be marked by two major events. Mm -hmm. One of them is to launch the construction of the assessment center mm -hmm. at Chambogo Hill. Mm. Uh, this is a complex which will have our offices, mm -hmm. which will have our workshops, which will have wow. our theaters, uh, laboratories, mini printery, Honestly, everything. Like everything. you literally, you're not going to support the hotelier industries two, anymore for workshops two, and what? Everything is in house. In house. It is in wow. house. Two, to mark this day, mm -hmm. we're also going to have a conference at Hotel Africana. Okay. And uh, this conference will take the whole day. Very mm. many papers will be discussed. Mm. Uh, to preside over these two events is the His Excellency, the President of Public of Uganda. And hopefully by 9 o'clock tomorrow, mm. we shall be already in Chambogo to wow. begin the, the celebrations. Now, this complex you're talking about, has it been built in a space of 10 years? No, we are, we are launching the construction tomorrow. You're launching the construction, construction wow. tomorrow. That's yes. amazing. Yes, yes, yes. So when one hears about um, UBTEV, many of us maybe could not understand it. What is its mandate for starters? Uh, first of all, mm. uh, UBTEV gets mandate from BITVET Act of 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, operationalized by the instrument number nine of 2009 mm -hmm. and it started its operations in 2011 mm -hmm. and uh, it was started in response to some gaps which were at the level of diploma and certificate awarding mm -hmm. uh, levels so it was mandated to uh, streamline regulate mm -hmm. and conduct national exams for all diploma and certificate awarding institutions other than secondary school mm. and universities. I hear you. So, and before its uh, inception in 2011, the management of exams was fragmented in the whole country. Mm. Institutions would examine themselves, others were based at Chambogo, others were based at uh, Nakawa. In, uh, Nakawa. Mm. So it was like that. You would not get the standard it was qualification in silos. <laughs> at levels of uh, certificate yeah. and level of a diploma. Mm. So that's what the mandate was given to this new board, which was Uganda Business mm. and Technical Examinations Board, and we started the operations at that time. Okay. Yes. We need to understand what are the functions of UBTEB. I, I love the fact that um, it came to streamline. Yes. And in these 10 years, I know it has not been a merry journey. It has not been something, you know, just to run into and re execute it once. Mm -hmm. But one would like to know what are the functions of uh, UBTEB as a whole? 
Uh, the functions of UBT were mm. separated in that resolution I've indicated nine, yeah. study instrument of 2009. And uh, one was is to conduct business technical examinations mm -hmm. for specialized training in all institutions in Uganda. Mm. <coughs> Two is to make rules ready, uh, to regulate the conduct of those examinations, mm -hmm. establish and oversee practical and theoretical question banks, mm -hmm. establish and maintain database of examination results and safe custody, also to work with other stakeholders to ensure that we only are carrying out these functions. And uh, the most important, the last one, is to award certificates and diplomas to successful candidates mm -hmm. in those examinations under business, technical, professional education and training, which is called BTVT in short. Well, so it really rhymes with your mission, a center of excellence of competence-based assessment, examinations, and a word for a skilled and productive uh, workforce. No, um, Mr. Nesmus, when you look at our workforce today in the market, I know at times you feel either we, we seem so entitled as a generation, or we are just too lazy, or we don't correspond to the market needs so how does jubitab come in to address this need that we are competitively ready for the market uh, what has been done mm. is that uh, bitvet act mm. uh, came in with reforms mm -hmm. and they have been running since 2009 there have been re reforms in training and delivery in assessment mm. Uh, and in the general policy that been reforms mm. and that reform be, uh, you can get it when you go to the Tivet mm. policy 2019 mm. that's the, the, the that's the policy mm. which followed the the Bitvet act but in these reforms to avoid all that say that you know people go to uh, workplaces without requisite skills do yeah. what we have now changed the approach and we are saying that <coughs> the delivery uh, of these skills, mm -hmm. you find you have the, for example, we do assessment, mm -hmm. we have the training institutions, mm -hmm. we have the departments at the ministry in charge of policy, mm -hmm. but the most important, we have the people who are in the world of work. So what this reform did is to bring the world of work at the center stage. Ah. And it is, we say that it is led by private sector mm. so that by the time even we start training by the time even we think of a curricula, curricula the world of work those who are using our people mm. those who are using our graduates yeah give us what is it that they require are they for people to deliver so that you customize it from customize. here ah, so we begin wow. with the, the world of work and they give us the what they call occupational standards uh -huh. that these are the things we require Mm. And the person who comes to work with us should know this. Then Basically. from there, working backwards, you come out with a training curriculum, nice. which we use to train. So the, the major thing that is enshrined in the Tivet policy 2019 mm. is to work in that trepidate mode, mm. that you work with the world of work, you work with the training and delivery, you work with assessment, then you come out with the product. But which product? Is also responsive, responsive to the, the needs oh, in the market. In the market. Wow. Yes. The conversation is about TVET and uh, it's about the UBITEB, a very great um, institution that makes sure that the, uh, the assessment, the competence are well done and the examinations and the words for skilled and productive workforce of a country stays aligned. Onesmas, when, when, you, when you hear all this, the mission, the vision, the objectives and all that's going on, one would wonder, what are the driving values of this? Because competence, productivity, competitive, there has to be a place where these values come from. What are your values uh, as an entity? Yes, as, as an organization, mm. uh, to achieve all this, mm -hmm. we have our underlying uh, values, mm -hmm. and one of them... And all of them are equally uh, very important, but there are those which are really related much with the, when you are dealing with examinations. Yep. One of them is integrity. Very much that so. <laughs> once, once you are dealing with a system where there is no integrity, yeah. uh, 
and you the have product will be affected. an award which the following day can be found on the street, then the organization can take it. Can take it. So That's integrity true. is one of our core value, confidentiality. Mm. Examination is like intelligence. You can't just, even Going. examiners are not always published. Yes, yes, and you ask for information. Yes, 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 mm. yes. Then professionalism. Mm -hmm. Most of our people use our teachers and they are very, very professional. That's nice. Then innovativeness to look at what is happening and how do you move to it, how do you mm. move quickly. Because you can say the, the, the technological changes are rapid, mm. so people must be very innovative. Teamwork and networking mm. and the transparency and accountability. Those are the, the core values that run this board as an examination board. As I've told you, it is. Uh, all of them are equal, but there are those mm. which that are must fundamental. emphasize that are fundamental. Wow. Once uh, the, the system breaks down for examinations and mm. the, everybody has exams on the streets, <laughs> then you close your shop and go home. You don't need even to be told. There is no value. There is no value. Well, the conversation we're having mm. today is with Mr. Onesma Sa Oyesije, the Executive Secretary of UBTAB. The conversation is about a competence, uh, best assessment, examinations, <coughs> and awards for skilled and productive workers. The hashtag is UBTF at 10. Put that on Twitter, pick your conversation and he will respond to some of your queries or what you want to know. We'll take a break for now and we'll return shortly. Well, it's still the conversation about the UBTEB at 10. They're celebrating 10 years tomorrow. And it's one of those entities that are looking at uh, competence, best assessment, examination, awards for skilled and productive uh, workforce in our country. With me in studio, I have Mr. Oyesi J. Our Nesmus, who happens to be the executive secretary. So, Mr. Nesmus, let's talk about the milestones, 10 years. For, for starters, when, when we're just starting, how was it? As uh, usual, the starting was not easy, mm. but uh, the ladies and gentlemen who were at that time yeah. started with a very good foundation. Nice. And uh, if you look at how we started, first of all, the response from the public. When mm. we, we started in the 2011, mm -hmm. the first examination we assessed slightly above 9,000 students. Whoa. That was very, very, very small compared to the numbers. By to the capacity. Time. Mm. But uh, as time went on, as I speak now, mm -hmm. we are talking of uh, 79,000 students. Those who enrolled and well examined. And looking wow. at the, the, the number of institutions at yeah. that time, we began with about uh, 198. Mm -hmm. But as I speak now, we have 592, and that tells you the confidence that people have. Uh, you must that be a very good leader. The speed is, is yes, super. Uh, 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 the, the numbers increased, mm. in both in terms of candidates, but also in terms of institutions we are assessing. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the, the law had changed to mm. require that for you to get a diploma in Uganda and a certificate, you need to, do, to go for national assessment, which yeah. was uh, being carried out by UBT. So from that time, even the staff mm. were about like 20. Now we are approaching 100. Wow. Because the numbers are the increase we need. And the demand uh, is uh, getting huge. And quickly we went into ICT integration mm -hmm. to ensure that all whatever we do, we have an enabler of uh, ICT. IT. And uh, currently now we no longer have people to come to move to Kampala. Mm. We are presenting candidates. Back and we are forth. presenting it's doing continuous assessment, coursework. Mm. No, no, no. Just sit in Kanungu, get your computer and you submit. And the results, see the same thing, you remain there. And we want to take it higher. The nice. Very soon we are going to have that. Use. We don't need to start moving the papers all the time with examination, <laughs> but computer-based examinations. You just get on the uh, way, on the uh, portal, uh, and, and you do your thing. Mm. Uh, you know, after doing that, mm -hmm. <coughs> the most recent milestone, which we really find, is that we are operating and a system called competence-based education and, mm -hmm. uh, and training, which is in short called CBIT. Mm. But one of the principles of CBIT is flexibility in learning. Of the learner. 
Yes, when yeah. you are learning, you, somebody should be learning in a flexible way, not to, to tell someone that you come here, you have to spend two years, no, no, but somebody should be able to come in, study what he wants, and goes. he goes, he mm. practices, then he comes back. So wow. then also following the government broader policy, mm. as I indicated, to the policy, yes. national development plan three, mm. uh, the manifesto, it is all recommending that now we have to go to package the learning in a way that is in modules. Oh that yeah. if somebody comes into a training institution, this person takes a module which he thinks can give him employment. Oh. It is only here where people So think it is not forceful feeding? No, 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 no. no. Mm. So we have now gone into what we call modularized assessment. Oh. That we look at the whole curriculum of the program, uh -huh. but put it into packages, small packages, which people just come and study. And this package should be pu uh, producing the whole person who can perform certain tasks in the field. Oh. If the man is in charge of entering data in the computer and he wants to be a council assistant, he should do that and go and do it. Comfortably. Comfortably. Mm. But one, it will help on, on flexibility mm. for people to come in and study what they want to study mm. and they go and use it and they, they come back at appropriate time. But also it increases accessibility mm. that we, large numbers of people come in to be skilled. And they go back in the community uh, without practice. considering what you studied first, mm. because you could be let me say it could be that I'm an accountant, yeah. but currently there are no jobs in this profession of the accountancy. But there is another skill which I can acquire and apply and feed my children. Therefore, yeah. you can quickly come and study that package, which uh -huh. includes that. Uh, if I take an example, if it is like a, a welding, mm. I go to do welding. An accountant can be a welder, and you can interpret that uh, skill. So oh, that okay. one we have uh, recent uh, introduced it in formal training institutions. Oh. Uh, these training institutions we deal with, they are, uh, they are those which take students from primary seven, mm. and they are called skills development centers. Those ones go in for programs, uh, of course at that time uh, they were three years, but mm. now we have broken them into those models oh, I have indicated. Simple quarters. Then we have the <coughs> training institutions, taken convocational institutions, mm -hmm. which take those who have finished senior four, and they have not gone to senior five. Mm. Those ones come in, they'll be joined by those who have come from the skills development center. Yeah. Then we have those institutions, most of the diploma awarding institutions, which take those who have finished senior six. And these institutions we deal with are both public and, and private, private institutions. So that means if my child is in, um, in, 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 in vacation of P7, he can actually come and learn something before they actually go exactly. back to and that, senior one. Yes, yes, yes. If the one of senior four has actually had a break, they can actually enroll and study something before they go. Wow. Uh, and which sometimes end up being the, 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 the future professional. The core professional, by the way. Of this child. Sorry. But the, the, the nutshell is that we want to enable as many Ugandans as possible mm. to be skilled. When we talk about the ICT integration, you say that uh, the system since 2017, um, you, you, most examinations are using, uh, uh, we call it EMIS. Yes, examination information management system. Um, yes. Um, now, integration of uh, the, the ICT in this day and age, how big is the reach nationwide? Is someone in Kabong, in Aleptong, will they be in position to tap into this kind of, so, of system? You see, uh, such a girl, sometimes mm. you don't wait for all you. You, you start with what you have. You start, but uh, you basics. Yes. Most of the most of the training sessions yes. have basics. Mm. There could be those lapses here and there, but they, they have those basics. And mm. we are not talking mm. that uh, we are looking at that students will learn or no no, yeah. no, no, no. We are still dealing with administration, small things, small oh. things, uh, receiving Internally. results, yeah. uh, registering students. But God willing, you never know, in the next 10 mm. years, we might have that we shall be delivering mm. uh, taken vocational education training on computer, and which is possible. That is great. Okay. But at least there is uh, that beginning. At first, people would move with papers from, you have talked of Kabong. Yes. He has to come and submit candidates. Someone has to come from Moroto. Uh -huh. But and now they would that crowd one the right. entire space mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, the entity. At times, there was mm -hmm. no parking. Uh, um, the accommodation is exactly. a little bit expensive. Mm -hmm. But even the time they spend on the, the road. Yes, please. Wow. So, staff capacity development, tell us about that. 
Uh, over time, the, this we started with very few, like 22, mm -hmm. but now we are reaching, because as the numbers increase, mind you, when we look at these numbers, it tells you that uh, How very soon, yeah. very soon, you are going to see very many, and it has already happened, many uh, children coming to take a convocation. Yeah. Because this is a skills <laughs> error. <laughs> so I, I for us, what we have done, so uh, yes, the, 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 we, we keep on upgrading some of our staff, mm. but also increasing in numbers to handle these numbers. Mm. And uh, uh, something to tell you that the UBTEB works as a secretariat. Those are, if oh. we were to recruit people to handle the numbers we are talking about, it would change. Be <laughs> but <laughs> because we work as a secretariat, so much, uh, much of our work is delegated to people whom we train and certify as assessors. So they go and do work on our behalf. Mm. Some are uh, industry-based, mm. some are practitioners, and some are in training institutions. So, so it's it, a 360 uh, so ecosystem. Uh, yes, yes, yes. We have to work with the, with the industry. Wow. That's what I was calling. I was calling it trepidate system. Yes. T -t -t the world of work is uh -huh. involved. The assessors, mm. our people are involved, but also we have the training institutions. Those who train our, our students are also involved wow. in our work. We're talking about a very great conversation about you who are skilled and you just need to go get certified. By the way, I've always had this conversation here that if you know that you're a very good welder, if you know you're a very good carpenter, if you know you're one of those who is actually very skilled but you just need to streamline your kind of business, mm -hmm. you go to the director of a technical um, uh, institute, go get certified, you know, just get organized and have exactly. these things run rightly. So mm -hmm. um, when we talk about um, the governance and all, uh, Mr. I want to understand is the board fully constituted when we get because now people will understand yes legally it's made but is the board fully constituted or we're just having a conversation of uh, you know wishful thinking now the, the board is fully constituted we have 15 okay. members of the board mm -hmm. under the chairmanship of engineer uh, dr. Muxa Silva the MD of National Water and Soil Corporation you have a very critical brain and uh, all documentation are in place mm for us to operate in terms of policies, uh -huh. uh, in terms of manuals, uh, in terms of regulations, uh -huh. we have all this documentation. Mm. Make sure this organization operates very well. Mm. And that's why we have moved uh, this far. We have also established a lot of world of linkages with other that's organizations. Uh, are we are operating alone or are we, you know, having no, no, back no, no, and no, forth no, no, linkages? No. What we have done, mm. because of the requirement that we have to bring in more players, mm. because our mandate allows us, yeah. is to have a memorandum of understanding with very many organizations, mm. majorly professional bodies, yeah. Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda, mm. uh, Uganda Engineers, UIT, uh, Federation of Uganda Employers, Mm -hmm. Uganda small scale industries. Now that we are giving a, a network for our trainers, mm. our trainees to, to, to where they can go and train doing industrial training. Uganda Manufacturers Association, mm. all those who have a working uh, a working relationship with them. Even the the loan scheme, we work with them to ensure <laughs> that our people also access. <laughs> they get access to credit. They, they, they get access to credit. <laughs> yes. At first, it was going much to the side of, uh, uh, of the It university. was going on the other side. Uh, so mm. we have we have done that one. Then we have also done a lot of uh, uh, global membership with other associations. Global. Yes. Okay. We are a member of. Uh, International Vocational Education Assessment. What is the end goal of, of, of such international uh, Now, when you, when you belong to this organization, one, uh, it improves your profile, but two, you also learn from other organizations. Oh. So worldwide, we have uh, an association where we are a member. Mm -hmm. We meet annually. We discuss on how we can improve this assessment and the technical plan, vocational. Yeah. Then we have Association for Education Assessment in Africa, also mm. a member, and also have that one of uh, East Africa. But another milestone which we need also to bring up to the mm. public is that since we started our operations... But as before we go to another one, there is something I wanted to ask Mr. Nismas. These international and global um, partnerships we have, mm -hmm. is there a chance that some of our trainers or our tutors, we have cross-border or transcontinental uh, kind of uh, exchange programs for our trainers to go and maybe be trained and see the mm, change they, in their they are not 
exchange as such, mm -hmm. but usually like the Association for Education Assessment in Africa mm -hmm. conducts uh, training mm -hmm. for some of our staff. So we send mm -hmm. staff, uh, some they conduct them sometimes of course in uh, different countries, mm -hmm. but they, they have a program of training staff on how to handle some of these uh, assessments. Then the other one, the international one, they also, they also mm -hmm. have it is majorly common and established in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, even our current president for Northern and Southern Africa is from Nigeria. So they also conduct this. When the sources allow, we send our staff mm -hmm. to go and train. When they That's conduct good, some because I was looking at the capacity lessons. building and mm -hmm. uh, the global end mm -hmm. that our trainers and our tutors can actually be in position mm -hmm. to understand the global dynamics and bring them to the regional scale and then yeah, we'll bring do, them we'll down do that. to where are resources, when resources allow. <laughs> I love the word where resources allow. Uh, and the other uh, milestone for the 10 years? Uh, oh, of course... We have not had any examination leakage as it is yeah. a it is a milestone watertight. for 11 years nothing nice. and uh, we make sure that, that one happens mm. then the most recent one the biggest milestone that at, at, uh, 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 at last mm. in the next three years or three years we're going to have our own home before you go to your own home yes please. let's talk about the examination security model um examination issues in this country they keep coming again and again how have you achieved this milestone it's not an easy sum because i mean your entity stands for competence and integrity 10 years how have you been in position to be that watertight when it gets to examination security uh you know when you are not working with an examination mm. you, you don't know what goes on you might think it is just a one-day event put papers in a printer and they have them fed, yes no 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 Actually, we have a rigorous process mm. right away from the time they develop these question papers mm -hmm. up the time of printing to the extent that those who happen to see, because eh, the last three papers when we were working, yes. uh, towards the end of the, uh, of the cycle, mm. as we go into production of papers, mm. we pick some stuff and put them away from others. Uh, no phone, no communication, uh, no internet. The, back to the, analog. Uh, those ones handle the final papers. Wow. Even out of those three, it is me to choose the last paper, which should be So they're equally not sure? They are not, even themselves, they are not sure. So eventually we print that, and, it, and we keep them 30 mm. days, 35 days. At, somehow towards the end of the exams we release them. That is the, the, the people outside might think it's a huge cost, but yeah, it, yeah, is, yeah. it is like inevitable. It's totally unplugging. It is, it is uh, inevitable. But also something uh, which also contributes to this mm. is that if you look at the way we assess students, it's mm. not the, the Napoleon style. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, do yeah. you remember? No, 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 no. These are scenario-based questions. Did you understand? Yeah. So mm. it is really, you must apply the knowledge. Most of the time, if you have not done something practical in the workshop, you, can you can't answer. It. <laughs> so even if the papers were released <laughs> for you, you won't have any in answer. In fact, there is a, a paper we do, which is the on-spot practical assessment. Mm. Supers which take six hours, the whole day, somebody say, produce this product now those ones actually we send the we send the the question in advance people stay with them uh, but you're sure uh, read <laughs> materials they buy materials but we know when they on that day that uh, somebody's observing yes he's looking at what you are doing how you are measuring the, wow. so eventually the, that's the, the assessment is not the only the in the writing no 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 wow. the on-spot assessment mm. there is a Another paper we assess called the real life. Mm -hmm. People must do what they are supposed to do in the field. So <laughs> with all that, there is no need even of looking for these exams. <laughs> it is. I love, but I those love. even who would look for them, they, they can't get access. You can't because, I yeah. mean, you better have a very strong yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, photographic memory to remember mm -hmm. because it's a lot. So now, the, the, the final the milestone which mm. we... Getting a home. A home. For the last 11 years, we have been renting. Mm. Minister's village in Tinda. <laughs> everywhere <laughs> here there is this department here there is that but uh but you're in a good not, location 
tomorrow we are launching the construction mm. by Sen and Brothers Construction Company. Okay. And uh, hopefully in the next two, three years, we shall have our own home. Mm. As I indicated at the beginning, this home is not only offices. Mm. It is one-stop center for all TVET examinations. You have your conference centers, you have your theaters there, you have the examination centers, you have, have your... The, the, the laboratory is there, we have the workshop. So our, our people should be able to test some of these items you are going before you tell someone to make the door you, you have make, actually done it you have actually done it then we hope to also have the, a mini printer mm. and a small hostel part mm. where people will be those who come to write to these mark. questions mm. those want to mark mm. but we can't accommodate the whole marking is a big exercise but there are small small things people come to do yeah, and they need accommodation so that is a milestone for us and uh, one oh, honest, must who designed this? What is it the board? Because I, I'm looking at the complex. It's a, it's a sustainable complex. Yes, it is. The, the hostels, people will be paying some little bit of money. Sometimes the, the when you talked about the complex of um, like a big conference hall, there was one time here in Uganda, one of my very good investors came and said, I need a complex where it has these amenities. We had none. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about a complex with all these amenities around, the maintenance of this complex is self-sustaining. Yeah, hopefully we shall, we shall be able to maintain it. Mm. Well, it was designed by Cornerstone engineers. Oh, yeah. mm. uh, it's good, as you, you can see. I can it's see it. A good one. It's, it's one of those ones you're going to have. But you see, mm. Mr. Nesmas, I don't want us to be a little bit... Um, unrealistic mm -hmm. that we have registered all these milestones for the 10 years without a hado not even anything a tinga getting in the one you say this one have to carry as a team this one you're going to take it in bits this mm -hmm. one you're going to take it as mm -hmm. a, a team what are some of the challenges in all these uh, the 10 years as an entity what you've seen and you've possibly learned from it by and large uh, as uh, 10 years is not a long period mm -hmm. of course we had a uh, the challenges mm. at the beginning what the cha you know sometimes when you, a new organization comes up there were legal frameworks which don't talk to each other oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, overca we over slowly overcame that through you know you talk to this one you find there is universal and other tertiaries act it empowers this and then you find there is another law but somehow we have gone over that mm. because we're all working for one government working for one ministry mm. who have managed to do that but to us the most critical challenge that he faces this type of training and assessment mm. is that taking for vocation education and training is very expensive it is so expensive that there are very many people are yearning for skills yeah. but they can't access some of our training institutions why because the moment you try to make it more practical hands-on there is nobody who's going to train to <laughs> make a chair without using a material. You must use the material. Even our exams, sometimes we have to sit with the with the, with the, with the practice with the trainers. Mm. But how how do we come out with without compromising quality? But how do we come out of this situation? You have to practice. The, so the the, the the biggest challenge mm. the, now this is not only for assessment but the whole TV subsector. Wow. It is very expensive. It is not like. A, People sit in the, and write about uh, Napoleon. No, 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 no. It is practical. It is practical. You must use materials. You must use bricks if you are to. You must use steel. You must use glass. You must use aluminium if you want to fabricate. The government so it is. More money there. The, the good news is that uh, through the at least in the manifesto government of Uganda, there is a promise. That to this effect. To this effect that it mm. needs to be subsidized mm. so that we can skill all Ugandans. Our thinking is that, uh, yes, there is a lot of unemployment, but also there could be also lack of the right skills. Also, it could be. Lack of the right I'm skills would actually speak a lot more uh, for me. There are, there are no jobs, yes, but... Even the, the ones that are there, uh, we are not competent uh, enough not to execute. So therefore, if we look at this area mm -hmm. and focus uh, on it as a country, as a ministry, which we are doing, mm -hmm. then this challenge wouldn't be the there. rest will move mm. and um what are the future plans like you see now me i i, I am moving with you from mm -hmm. the inception to the milestones and now the challenges 
But we need to know what does the future hold, Mr. Nesbitt? The future is very bright mm -hmm. for taking for vocational education. Mm -hmm. It's very, very bright because you see, it is no longer a choice whether you have skill. studied what, whether you have studied what, you must, have a skill. you must go for skills. Yeah. And even for you, you are here because of a certain skill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah those who don't, who don't have skills don't come here. So the future is very bright. Yes. Uh, but as an organization, we are, as I indicated at the beginning, we are going to continue rolling out the modernized assessment mm -hmm. syllabi to ensure that we, one, we enable all Ugandans to come to these training institutions for mm -hmm. training, for being skilled. Mm -hmm but also to ensure that this training is flexible for Ugandans. And, and, and that's what I wanted to talk about, the flexibility. It could be flexible, but is it affordable? No, hopefully once we put it into packages, it is mm. also going to... Oh, uh, in yes, different clusters. Uh, once we put it in those modules, mm. it is somehow going to be a bit... Not affordable. Uh, somehow affordable. Mm. And being that, is that somebody can come in, you do a bit mm -hmm. what you want to go and use. You go and use it. Work. Then when you accumulate enough resources, you come back. There's a, there, there, some will say, but won't there be time limit? What is, what is important is people to come back and finish. Yeah. Of course, we know some people will come in and want to finish and go to another level. Mm. They want to finish a diploma and go to, for a degree. I would, I would go to, to, to your model. Yeah. I do one model, get to understand it, go practice it, then come back and upgrade to the and end. upgrade so yes. you, you can even for parents to be convenient even for students right this yes. you know the, the selling of cows selling of land <laughs> you are selling the land you don't know that the man will have even where to stay after the course that's the that one will, will end that and will people should also know that however small the job could be mm -hmm. you need just to do that job and perfect it so long as you have a meal on your table, then other things will be Mr. Nesbis, I want you to tell that to the youth of this country because no. we love big figures. The and big uh, figures. We, we, we always want to look out for uh, the big deals. But you've said however small the job However it is, small it is, do it and do it perfectly. Yeah. Uh, you know some of, of this wow. unemployment thing, hmm. I don't want it's a big people monster. to misquote me. Yeah. But what, do you, what are you doing? You give some of the small job, even that one you have not perfected it, but you're also despising it, which is not also good for so our... So the mindset has to change. Uh, so oh. get small skill, mm -hmm. which can feed you and your family. Capitalize on it. Capitalize on it. And eventually, even when you see people are very successful, they have started small. Mm. If, you, are, if you, you have a small skill, capitalize on it, perfect it. The rest will be easy. Is. Then another mm. another thing we want to focus on mm -hmm. is the the automation. Still, we want to continue with automation and ensure that the future of utilizing in ICT integration. Mm. Of course, uh, this one well relates uh, back to when COVID came. Mm. You know, this is a, a sector which was caught off guard. Yeah. <laughs> How do you deliver the <laughs> technical vocational education on yes. computer? But we have uh, read books now. We have read literature. That's it is nice. possible. You can do it. Mm. So, so, and we shall uh, continue. So you at want to gel with the ICT model? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That Makes you can sense. conduct practical exams on, mm. on, 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 on computer Online. by simulation. But it's not a short term. It is costly. But it is where we want to, they to go. Want to go. Mm. Uh, I think that is that. Okay. Uh, maybe the, the another challenge which I did not highlight was also the COVID. The COVID, the COVID was a big challenge. I mean, it disrupted. But quite a lot. for this subsector, mm. even our office it was seriously hit. Mm. But uh, somehow we have managed to overcome it. Mm -hmm. We don't have those backlogs. Mm. We have managed to overcome it over time. Mm. Yes. Now. Um, those who are actually watching this show, they would actually love to be a part of this conversation, even beyond today. If you're one of those Ugandans out in the universe, it could be in the diaspora and you're not in Uganda, but you'd like to tap into this. It's an opportunity, many of us as young youths, we need to have a skill. One, for I for one, I should go and get one skill or two. Um, Mr. Nesmus, what is the call from your institution to the rest of Ugandans out in the void? Now, this is uh, something I want to tell Ugandans, majorly mm. my, the, the young parents like me, yeah. that they need just to look at 
skills development as an opportunity for our children. Mm. Uh, let the child be exposed to all opportunities. Mm. You know, we have that tendency, you know, I'm an accountant, my child needs to be an accountant. No, it is, it is a, these are different times. Mm. But I want to call on parents to know that taking convocation education and training is no longer avoidable. You, yeah. can, you can't do without it. You People must have it. Yeah, we have started receiving students who have, uh, even who have done other bigger courses. Masters. Uh, but they want to be skilled. They want to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. for you to run some of these business ventures, you need to be skilled. Yeah. If you are not skilled, then you will be investing and people will be taking uh, mm. your, your, your money. Maybe before you go, <coughs> the, uh, for us as an organization, we want to galvanize our efforts toward the skills development. And as a board, we are committed mm -hmm. and we pledge to this country to ensure mm -hmm. that assessment in this subsector of activity is streamlined. Mm -hmm. uh, and the future lies in making sure that the as a quality assurance organization at the end of training, we are able to ensure that we get out of the right product is, 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 achieved. is achieved and how are we going to get that is it uh, with the MOUs we have at the regional level the continental level or what now with the, this you see when look at the where we are going with this modularization eventually when we get modularized curriculum mm -hmm. uh, then we shall be able to handle some of these weaknesses which have been there but also look at what uh, the government has been doing mm. you know the government of uganda right off from 2008 mm -hmm. uh, there has been a deliberate effort really to ensure that this sector they have invested a lot of money in this sector they have built up new training institutions equipped them those which were old have been refurbished mm. they have been equipped uh, in fact, uh, something to mention in, in regard to the gender. Mm. Every new institution that is put up to ensure that there is a dormitory for female students. That you is gender sector, sensitive, yes. Yeah, a, then, the, of course, the, the workshops. We are not saying it is 100%, but there is that deliberate effort. Yeah. And on this note, I want to take the opportunity to thank the government of Uganda, more mm. specifically the Minister of Education. Yeah and its entire political leadership for that effort and the, the investment they have done to ensure that our future generation is skilled. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the skills we... It's a timely engagement. It's not about people who work in Uganda only. No. But once we skill our youth... Can they compete when they are sent to Japan, to Kuala Lumpur? They to, will. Oh they yeah. will. So long as they, 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 they have the skill which is required. You know, mm. these days it is not about the paper. No. It's what about can the you skill. Do? And somebody will say, what can you do yes. in this company? What skill do Therefore, you have? if you can't answer that question, most probably you are not going to be hired. Eh, please. <laughs> Better yeah. come and get a skill. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that is a skill. Therefore, mm. skilling our youth would make sure that we also export labor which is skilled. Mm. And uh, we have the numbers here. What is missing is that linkage. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen the ones from Philippines. They're very skilled on the other mm. end. But also working on the attitude yes. of our people. Of our people. Towards the work. Attitude. Yeah. And attitude. this is emphasized in, the, in some of our, of our training. Wow. Attitude is very, very important. Well, there you have it, countrymen, as we're finalizing this conversation. I really want to thank those who have been um, online. Um, a couple of you have been online. I want to just to sample some of the feedback that I've seen here. Uh, that is on Twitter and um, other areas. Uh, let me just look at uh, some feedback here. People are giving feedback here. Someone says, uh, okay. I think this was just a response. Uh, many of you are sending in your feedback about this conversation. Okay. Now, to those who actually want to go and have your certificates, uh, rather your skills certified, just go to the Directorate of Industry Training. Uh, it is just in Chambogo, on Chambogo Road is, as you're approaching Tinder. These will actually help you about, um, about that conversation, and they'll tell you how to actually go about it. Um, so if you're one of those uh, skilled laborers, but 
you you just want to be clean and smart and you know compliant and organized step into the opportunities that are please be a part of this so tomorrow the celebrations are starting at what time uh, tomorrow we are beginning at nine o'clock okay. from Chambogo. We shall first launch the construction okay. and laying of the foundation mm. of the foundation stone. Then from there, mm -hmm. uh, by ten ten thirty, mm. we shall be at Hotel uh, Africana okay. for the conference. Mm. They want to call upon those who have been chanced and been invited yeah. to ensure that they come on time. Mm. And how do we tap into that conversation, the rest of us? Will NTV carry the feed or something? Yeah, we have live coverage. Perfect. We have live coverage. I don't know which houses mm. are going to be there, but I'm mm. sure NTV... We are, we, we are leading in yeah, this. We are, yes, we are leading in this one. <laughs> will be there. But yeah. really, it will be good to come and listen more yeah. on uh, the, what is going on as far as Tibet is concerned in Uganda. Wow. Yes, yes. Honest, I can't thank you enough <clears throat> on behalf of the country and my generation. I really want to thank you that the government, especially the Minister of Health has woken oh, up to the so. reality of skilling us mm -hmm. as a generation that we just don't have very brilliant ideas but we can practice them and you know start to change the narrative in our communities this is something very pertinent well that said if you want to be a part of this conversation log on to uh, their website they have a website by the way many of you are asking me I saw there just go to www.ubtep.go.ug ubtep it's a you for Uganda, then we have B for Butembo, we have T for Tangerine, we have E for Elephant, and then we have B for Butembo again, dot G-O dot U-G. Those who are in the diaspora and you are You've been actually watching and you want to be a part of this. They were asking, I'm not in Uganda, how can I be part of this? Log on to that website. They have the entire information you need. You can go and you study. You can have other skills in something. But comrades, it's high time we go and embrace the new skills that are very dynamic to the changing worlds. But not only that, that are competitive in the market. I'm Andrew Chiamagira with Main Studios. I had uh, Mr. Onesimus Oyesije, who happens to be the executive director. The conversation doesn't stop here. Let's spill it over to our communities where we dwell. And not only that, let's take our children to skills centers that can be empowered. Have a lovely afternoon.